cover today is to create the pendulum at the top of this. Now this is a horizontal pendulum, a little different than most, and I'm going to want to make it a, um, a symmetrical part, and you'll notice that this part down here, it should be joined to this, it should be part of the escapement, but this is asymmetrical. So what I'm going to end up doing is creating two parts and then, then joining them at the very end. So let's get started. We're going to start a part. I'm just going to leave P1 and not worry about naming it because I am going to be getting rid of it. Now this is one thing that I see some people trying to do and it can be very aggravating. Now what people do is go, hey, you know what, I'm going to put the pendulum on the top of that. So let's just start sketching on this and we'll sketch it and we'll see that that's okay and we'll start extruding. Small problem here is that you'll notice that these green lines on this part here on this escapement means that this is now the active part. So anything I build is going to be part of that active part and I don't want that to happen. And that's just, you know, it, it becomes frustrating. So I'm just going to escape out everything. Now we're in part one. So the best thing to do on this is that you go new work plane on a face. We're going to check on that face and you'll notice that we're still active in this um, part one that we're going to be using to create the pendulum. So that way we stay out of some of that geometry and uh, we don't end up modifying something we didn't want to modify in the first place and having hit control Z and redoing everything. So the next thing I want to do here is that I'm going to create a sketch on that plane and we're going to do a rectangle, a central rectangle, and we'll see if we can snap in on some of the circle. Now, the one thing is, is that circle is at zero, zero, and you'll notice that I can basically come in and mouse over that and get to zero, zero. But if I had created the work plane and I did project geometry, it would have projected that geometry there so that I could have used some of that for snapping to it. Um, I'm not going to be too concerned about that right now. And what I can do here is basically I'm just going to start again with the center rectangle. And get in on zero, zero. Just like that. And I'm going to zoom out. And the one I want will be 10 wide and 50 long. So let's come out here. Now one thing I said is I was going to make this a mirror and you can't, I'm not going to mirror there. I'm going to basically mirror off the axis of the center here. So what I'm going to do here is draw a line and I'm going to press and hold the shift key to get to the center snap of that. And we're going to trim this. Now keep in mind when you're choosing some of these tools that there's always a drop down and experiment with the different derivatives of that function. With the trim, I prefer the delete. It seems to make the most sense to me. So I can delete out those elements and we're good to go. At this point, I want to just basically pull this guy up like this. We'll go to 10. So again, you can always text enter stuff just like that. And we've got everything set up and we're still in this part. This is the active part. The escapement and everything are not being touched by it. So this is a good thing. I don't necessarily want that sketch there anymore. So next thing I do is I'm going to start cutting out some lines here. And I'm going to get this to about 135 degrees. This is one of those where it's kind of by guess by golly. So that looks pretty good to me. Now I could try and finish off this line and come up here and get that 135 again, which I can, but it's usually not necessarily perfectly accurate. So in this case, I think the best thing to do would be to mirror. This is the element that I want to mirror and I want a vertical mirror. And all I have to do is snap down to this one spot right there. And we'll click on that, say it's okay, middle mouse button, and we've got everything nailed down as far as that goes. We'll draw the final line, holding down shift so we get all the elements that we need. And from this, you know, we could do the pull and pull it through, and make sure that we're doing everything properly. But you'll notice here that you've got punch, stamp, and section. In this case, I want to just kind of punch through that part just like that. So it saves me a couple of mouse clicks and dragging things around. So we're going to say that that's okay. And again, we're going to delete that sketch. Now, I want this to be arrayed along here because the weight that I'm going to create is going to have like a little notch in it. And that notch, I want to be able to put into this at different uh, distances along the edge. And as you saw before, is that I can't necessarily create a pattern unless it's something's defined as a feature. So I'm not going to be able to pattern those faces. So we have to choose a feature set. And most people just come in here and click on this, go to the boss as the default, and that didn't quite work. So I'm going to hold down shift and it's basically going to fail on me here. Let's just try this again. Let's go to boss and go hold down shift 
and select a couple of faces, say that's okay, and it's not making a, a proper boss, and that can be frustrating. And you know, it might be a boss with a breakthrough, might be this, might be that. It's kind of hard, but after you we've played with this, you'll find that it's a little more intuitive. In this case, I'm creating pocket. So we'll go like that, and we'll go to those two, and that looks pretty good. Reference position. Let's just choose. Let's just choose the bottom here, or actually right at that point. It's always good to give it some reference as far as the directions that you want, the start direction and uh, the main direction, that sort of stuff. So we've got all that defined, and at this point we can do a linear pattern. And just to make sure, I'm going to come in here and go to linear. That way we've got everything set up right. The source, it's expecting some feature that we just created. So we've got that guy. And we're going to tell it what direction we want it to go. Number, we're going to say about six. Distance, let's say five and see what happens. So when I do that, it looks like it probably worked pretty good, but I want to maybe have a better distance apart. So I can come in here and grab that arrow and start going, hey, you know what, six in this case is probably a little better. You know what, let's just scooch out a little more. Let's go to seven. And we're going to hit the mouse button to accept that. And now we've got all those notches. So at this point, I want to mirror this part. So let's come back into modeling and we choose, let's see down here, where's mirror? There's mirror. So we've got mirror. We're going to choose that this is the plane to mirror from and we're going to say, okay. Now, one thing you'll notice is, is that I'm going to clear out of this is that I didn't say keep the original. So let's close that. Let's go control Z and let's try this again. We're going to come in here. We're going to go to mirror. The mirror plane is right there and we're going to hit copy. And the new owner of this is going to be part one, the P1 that I have here. And we'll sit there and go, okay. Oh, well, it's a duplicate name. So we have to go point one. So we've got everything set up here. Now we can close this out. Now what I want is for this part, this part, and this part all to be joined. And this is actually pretty easy to work out. Now how we join these is actually pretty simple. We're just going to come up to Boolean here and you can choose this down and you can subtract and intersect and reflect. But in this case, I want to unite. Now this is the blank. This is part one, one. And the tool is I'm going to use this guy. Now you can say keep the tool, but I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to say, okay, but we're just going to close this down. And you'll notice that now the P11 is this, this pendulum all in one piece, just like I wanted. Okay, so now what we want to do is join this pendulum here to this guy right there. And again, we're going to use the same thing. We're going to, although in this case, I'm going to use this, I'm going to make this the active part. The reason why is, is that when I come in here and say with the Boolean, I want to unite it, I want to unite the escapement with this as the tool. And I don't want to keep the tool, but as soon as that gets absorbed, it's going to get absorbed into the escapement. So let's just close out of that. And you'll notice that now the escapement has that pendulum all balanced on the top. So there you go. That is basically how we can create the pendulum arm. And we will start putting the weights on that in the next session. So hopefully that's helped you out. And I will chat with you guys in a week.